are still here. Why? Because we haven't fulfilled them yet. Amen? Amen. We still got a ways to go in the Lord, but we thank you, Father. And when I say a ways, he's still molding us and shaping us more into his son's image. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you. I mean, I like the way you do it at times, but I still thank you, God, because I know you do all things well. There's nothing that you don't do, Lord, that isn't good, that isn't well, that isn't perfect. But you make us and mold us more to your son's image. Amen and amen. I thank you, Father. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Pine Hills Community Church. Welcome, welcome to our second Sunday service. And you out there in social media land, hello. We are thankful and we are glad that you're here with us. Amen and amen. And as always, we'd like for you to hit your share, the share button, your like button, for others to be able to enjoy a part of this worship experience, okay? Amen and amen. Boy, y'all look good out there this morning, amen? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise your name this morning. But let us be mindful, Father, that some of us came in here, Father, with heavy hearts. This morning or yesterday or last week might not have been the best day. That ache or that pain might have hit them. That, 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 that disagreement with someone may have come about, Father. But we thank you, Lord, that you said we should not, Father, live according to the way things happen in our lives. We would forever hold fast to you and your word, Lord. That when things and trials come, Father, we are to elevate you and glorify you, Father. The love of our souls, the one who made it possible for us to be here, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray and say amen and amen. And our praise team will lead us in prayer. Let's just be thankful for what God has done in our souls. As I said, the love of our souls. The, the provider, the one that saves us from Alpha to Omega. Amen, amen. Come on and put your hands together and give God some glory. Somebody right there in your house, come on, open up your mouth and begin to bless God right where you are. Hallelujah, we bless you, God. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but thank God that we got another chance. Is there anybody grateful that you've been given another opportunity just to tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely glad to be in the house. I want to say thank you to Pastor Miles and Lady Kwan, all of the clergy and all of the members here at Pine Hills Community Church for keeping me lifted in prayer. This time on last week, they went down my throat just to look and ended up having to do an emergency surgery to remove a nine centimeter obstruction that was blocking my breathing. And all I could think of once it was over, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, if it had not been for the saints who were sending up prayers, and the word of the Lord declares that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And so I come to declare to you that it's not over until God says it's over. And whatever the Lord promised you, whatever the Lord spoke over your life, you shall live to see it happen. The devil may try to sift you as weak, but I come to stand as a witness that you shall live through it and you will stand to declare the goodness of the Lord. Is there anybody glad that God gave them another opportunity? I know I'm not the only one that was knocking on the brinks of death's door, but God said no. And we've come to bless them yet another time. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Sing unto God with a voice of triumph. Lift up his name for he is good and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You may be going through something right now, but I come to tell you that if the Lord be for you and if he is on your side, there is nothing that can stop you. There is nothing that can take you out because he is more than this whole world against us. Come on, bless the Lord right there. We're just going to do an oldie but a goodie. I feel good in my spirit and I feel good in my body. Hallelujah. And we're just going to do an old song, but it's a good song. It just says, I will trust in the Lord. So let's put our hands together and we're going to sing it as one big choir. Y'all ready? 
that he will bring me through. And I know that he will never leave me, neither will he forsake me. Somebody can put your hands together right there. If you know that he will never leave you, neither will he forsake you. Give him glory right there on that. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you in this room today because you've been so good to us. Oh, you, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship, Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. My worship, all of my worship, Father, receive my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, saying here's my worship, all of my worship, Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship, Father receive my worship, all of my worship.
Father, receive our worship. As a corporate body, we lift it up to you. All of our worship from a sincere place, from a pure heart. Here's our worship. Yeah. All of our worship. Father, receive our worship. 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 Give it to you from a pure place, oh God. We give it to you from an honest place, oh God. One thing I know is that in moments like these when we come together and we begin to lift up corporate worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he comes and he lives in the praises of his people. And what happens when God comes and he lives in the praises of his people when we're giving him praise, glory, and adoration? What he's doing in is he's coming and he's seeing about your personal needs. And he doesn't have to expose those needs to everyone around you. But he has the ability, as long as you give him praise, as long as you give an atmosphere, create an atmosphere for him to live in, you give him space and you allow him the opportunity to heal your body, to work on your mind, to fix and mend your marriage, to work on your job, to soothe your troubled soul. If you would just give him glory in your own personal way, you invite him in to any trouble. You invite him in to any issue and he will, he will come to see about you. If you would just lift up a praise, the presence of the Lord is here and he's waiting to go to battle for you. He's waiting to fix your body. He's waiting to see about your family. The only thing that he asks is that those who worship, worship in spirit and in truth. Somebody order the presence of the Lord, for he is in this place. I said the presence of the Lord is in the room. And if you would just worship and praise him, he will come to see about you. God and we know your presence is very real we honor you God and we know that your presence is here somebody say something sweet to him and give him glory all over this room for he's working and mending on every person here One way that we can recognize the presence of the Lord being here is that if we are filled with the Holy Spirit ourselves, I believe that the presence of God has walked in the doors as well. If you carry the Holy Spirit, if you say that you are saved, I believe that the presence of God is here. A lot of times, man, we use this scripture. We say, if he be lifted up, the Bible says, the Bible says, I'll draw all men unto me. It's not drawing men to us. It's drawing men unto him, if he be lifted up. So here it is. If you in here have the Holy Ghost, and the woman of God say, we ought to, exalt him we ought to give him praise if he be lifted up he'll start drawing see the thing is we wait for church to lift him up but if the church wants to grow you got to lift him up on your job if you carry the Holy Ghost 
See, we trying to come up with strategies and tactics on how to grow church. But growing church really right here is my assignment is really to, to bring upon discipleship here. To equip. But as we go out and we go out into the, our communities and on our jobs. He say, if I be lifted up. So I, I need just a moment. Right now, we're not trying to, we're not trying to evangelize to nobody. I just need some worshipers in here. I just, just for a moment. I just need some worshipers. Let's love on them for a moment. You brought the presence of God, and is that, is that how you're going to lift him up today? I got a question for you. Is that how you're going to lift him up today? Pastor Miles, I'm too tired to lift him up. Pastor Miles, I'm too sick to lift him up. Well, lift him up in your mind. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. If you can't get up, you can clap your hands. If you can't, if you can't, if you can't do anything else, this ain't the time to be macho. This ain't the time to be a diva. This is the time where we all are worshipers. We all are servants of the kingdom. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? I need somebody to help lift him up. If he's been good to you, if he's been working out things for your life, if he keeps restoring you, come on, we ought to lift him up in this room. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, in your own voice, in your own personal time. This ain't nobody but you and God. If he be lifted up, 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 I'll do all the drawing. If he be lifted up, I'll do all the drawing. If he be lifted up, I'll do all the drawing. You don't need a strategy. You don't need a tactic. You don't need another idea. Here it is. If you want people to be drawn unto him, lift him up. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Father. We extol you, Father. You are an amazing God. You are a wonderful God. You are our provider. You are our, you are our redeemer. You are our restorer. You are the lifter of our hands. You are the bridge over troubled water. You are the, oh my God. God, you are battle axe. We thank you. We lift you up. 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 on your way down, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to see all of you today. Um, I don't take it for granted just to be amongst you. I thank God for you. Thank you for uh, being here. But I thank you also for allowing your time to be interrupted just to give God what's due to him. Hallelujah. I think we all have like minds where we can say God is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. I thought I had more than that. I said God is worthy of all our praise. Amen. So many times, man, we try to fight through mindsets just to give God what's due him. And I'm learning, man, the more you praise God, the more God can lift you up out of your mindset. If 
God can pose a question in this room right now and was to ask you personally and then he say, I'll expose it. What, what's on your mind right now that's in the way of giving me what's due? Because the truth of the matter is, whatever is on your mind, I want to let you and your mind know I woke you up in your right mind. Did y'all hear what I just said? And if I woke you up at least when you come into the house of God, you should be able to put that down and give God what's due. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to see Veronica. She's out of the hospital to be with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all make her feel good. Amen. It is good to see her this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Things are happening. I'm sitting on the phone and I'm talking to different people in our church. Restoration is happening in our church. I'm I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting messages of couples being restored. I'm getting messages. People are coming up out the hospital. Are uh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Restoration is happening. Amen. Restoration is happening. And I thank God for a move um, that he's doing for all of you. This is what prayer does. It is not us, but this is what God wants to do in um, your life. We want to continue to pray for the sick and shut in. Pray for Miss Betty. In this moment, if she is watching, we love you. We pray for you. Pray for Miss Betty. If you got her phone number, reach out. I don't want to tell Miss Betty's business because she'll always come for me uh, after church. Uh, but y'all reach out to Miss Betty. Just check on her. All right. So we definitely praying for her. That's my girl. She's an amazing peop uh, uh, person. Um, and so uh, we definitely want to pray for Miss Betty. Everybody that's sick and shut in. Amen. Amen. We want to remind you that next weekend, next, next, uh, well, let me go back to today. We have our quarterly business meeting immediately after church. We uh, definitely want you to be here. If you are a member of the church, if you are a member of the church, please be here. Uh, we're going to take a few moments to um, get some things out the way so that you can know what's going on, where we are, make some decisions. We need you. Um, um, amen. 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 Our Lord knows I want to get to the point where our business meetings don't be uh, our business meeting. People don't have these. Um, it seems like it's just be like it's always something, something, something bad is going to happen. That season, that day is over. Somebody say amen. 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 We are in a place where we want to get some things done for the sake of the church. Uh, uh, I'm glad to see of how, how our trustees are coming together, trying to put ideas out there, uh, thinking hard on how we can continue things going on. Um, and so definitely, you know the system of our church. Um, it play, You have to play a part. We want you to play a part. We want your buy-in. We want your, uh, uh, um, your feedback. We want to hear from you what the members have to say concerning the house of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So definitely be here. So you don't be hearing from the, from from another source. Hey, what happened? What did they say? What happened? You know what? No, be here. Be here. We need to see your lovely face. Look at your neighbor and say, have your face in the place. Yeah, y'all didn't look at nobody. Y'all scared to look at each other. See what I'm saying? You scared to look at a look at a person across the room and say, have your face in the place. Amen. I know you probably might say, well, Pastor Miles, I don't do all those meetings. I don't care. Just take it, you know, and do whatever. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. We want you to be a part, and we want you to listen in on what's going on. Your voice matters here at Pine Hills Community Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I thank God for what's uh, taking place, and um, I believe that God got us. I, I, I told um, 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 someone, man, I am not in panic. I'm not in panic as it relates to our church. I won't be in panic. Um, I've been doing, I've been pastoring for a little minute, been doing ministry for years, been doing ministry for years. Uh, I know I may look young, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting up there, y'all. Uh, um, um, but I've, I've seen what God can do with only a few people, and I believe that God can do way more than what we can think. Amen? 
Amen. 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 So it is up to us to be innovative, creative, to put our hand to the uh, to the plow and let's get to work, get some things done. I believe God, period. Point blank. That's it. I'm not losing no sleep over no building. I ain't getting sick. I ain't dying early over no building. Amen. Amen. Church going to go on. Let me tell you right now. That's why we don't get, don't get focused on no building. As much as you want a building, you don't get focused on the building. Ministry is beyond a building. You can go anywhere and have church. The thing is you get people that's focused on a building and then they want to leave the church because they don't have that building. Well, if that's the case, you didn't really have God because God can take you anywhere. Before there was ever a church, there was, watch this, they was moving around in the land. You had to be ready to move wherever the spirit of the Lord was. Maybe y'all can read in your Bible and check it out for yourself. You got to be beyond the building. You got to be beyond the building. That don't mean we neglect the building because we're still responsible for what God has given us. But we're not going to be or, um, um, down about something that we believe that God can turn around for us. Amen. Amen. So tell your neighbor, don't start panicking. Don't start tri tripping. It, it, it get the information and let's get to work. Let's get some ideas going for what we need to. I know y'all getting quiet. It's okay. It's okay. I told the Lord I ain't dying early over no church. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I would not be one of them pastors where y'all see me on the news and they said that pastor had a heart attack. The devil is a liar. I'm going to be on the beach somewhere saying, God, do it back in Orlando at Pine Hills. Okay, okay, amen. Heads are down, ain't nobody saying amen. I'm still going to talk and I'm saying right. I will not die over no church. Amen. And don't you die over no church because it's just as show as you leave here. Church go on, people go on. Amen. 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 But we're responsible to God for what he has given us. We ought to be good stewards. If we say we're committed to this, let's put in the work, our talents, our times, and our treasure. And I believe that God will meet us. If you can stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. I don't know if Veronica, uh, Sister Christian, did y'all get my text? Okay, fine. Christian, if you got that that um, music there. Um, listen, I want you to go to Acts chapter 10. We're talking about family. We're talking about um, um, family today. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10. Um, to some, this may be very, very familiar, and I want to pull for this for my theme as for me and my house. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's our theme. Um, and so I, I, I want to I wanna just, uh, I want you to go down to verse, um, let's see here. Go down to, uh, to verse 44. Verse 44. If you got it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold up, pastor. Hold up. Hold up. Amen. We got it. Okay. Listen. The Bible records, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Verse 45 says, thank you, Tristan. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that those should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? and commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Church, um, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for everyone here. God, forgive us of our sins. Now, God, as I speak your word, please, God, let me speak with clarity. Father God, you speak through me where everybody is. Father God, you let this word help them, encourage them, inspire them to be better as disciples. 
We thank you for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. Church, I want you to write something down. I want you to write something down if you got notes. Number one, God has a plan. Number two, Deacon Clyde, good to see you. God's plans will come together. Also good to see you, Sergeant Willis, you're in the house. Good to see you. God's plan, number three, will affect my house. Number one, God has a plan. Number two, God's plan will come together. And number three, here's our declaration today that I would love for you to join in with me. God's plan will affect my house. God's plan will affect my house. It is here, church, that we find a Roman soldier named Cornelius. The Bible records that when you look at from the top of chapter 10, starting verse 1 and down, he is a devout man. He is a man of prayer. Despite being a Roman, Mr. Cornelius was a worshiper of God as well. He was a man, watch this, according to verse 2, who prayed and he also gave to the poor. You read down, God gets Cornelius' attention. According to verse 3, and I believe verse 4, it says about the ninth hour of the day, and the reason it was the ninth hour of the day, uh, uh, well, during that time, it was that particular time to start praying. He saw clearly a vision, an angel of God, coming in and saying to him, Cornelius! When he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, look at what God says, your prayers and your arm, alms have come up for a remor memorial before God. And here is the thing, church, that I don't want you to miss. Number one, he comes to Cornelius while praying, fellas. Listen to this. Cornelius was not having a dream. It was while he was praying. And I want every man in here to know God can reveal things while in prayer. Pastor Miles, why are you talking about as it relates to the man? Because last week we talked about the importance of the man, watch this, having a connection with God as it relates to the family. Here is an example to reveal to us that you can or may see some things while pursuing God in your prayer time. What Cornelius did in his private or public, in the public, watch this, who knows, watch this, but it, but it, but it set him up for a time where God will want to do something weird yet wonderful. Need you to stick a pen in that place where I'm talking about weird yet wonderful, wonderful for a brief moment. And I want to continue on because we find that the scriptures record that this praying and giving that Cornelius was doing has come up as a memorial. I like how the easy to read version records it in chapter 4. 
It says, staring at the angel and feeling afraid, Cornelius said, what do you want, sir? The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and has seen your gifts to the poor. He remembers you and all that you have done. Can you, do you know that God is watching you? He's watching you while you pray and he's watching what you put in concerning somebody else's life. God wants Cornelius to understand that which you have prayed, I heard it. And that which you have given, I saw it. Since I saw it, here's some instructions that I want to give you, Cornelius. If you go down, notice in verse 5, he gives further instructions to Cornelius to send men to Joppa to go look for a man named Peter. Now, mind you, the way God is talking to Cornelius is through prayer and a vision. But look how God, because he got a plan, start putting some things together and start dealing with Peter. Tell him you'll call him back. His name, Peter. You look at verse 5. You look at 5. And they told him, God tells, the, 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 look, 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 look um, Cornelius, I need you to take some men. Go find Peter. Matter of fact, and here's the deal. Cornelius don't even know Peter. The name comes up in a vision. Go find this Peter. So watch this. Here it is. The fellas that Cornelius is seeing, all they know is we need to go find a Peter. Never met Peter, but we need to go find him. And if our leader told us to go and find him, here it is. We don't see in the scriptures where there is really question. It's just they just did it. In watch this, in trusting that what they leaders said, we just going to do it because I trust the mere fact that you hear from God because here it is, I see that you are devoted to him. I've seen you have a prayer life. I've seen you stay in a place of worship. So, let's go find this Peter. When you look at this, when you study Peter, his name did distinguish him. He was originally named Simon. But one day, Jesus had turned to Simon and called him Peter, the rock. It was a nickname at first, but it stuck until he was better known by Peter than given his name of Simon. A lot of people have analyzed his impetuous personality and have condemned his defection from Jesus on the eve of the crucifixion. And what we need to remember is that Peter was a zealous follower and a close friend of Jesus Christ. He was a powerful preacher, a worker of miracles. He had a most, watch this, the most, uh, one of the most significant roles in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ from its initial small beginning to eventually permeate the entire empire. While you may or may not feel comfortable with the notion that, watch this, he was the human upon whom Jesus founded his church, let me say that if ever there was a man suited for such a role, it would have been Peter. There had to be a man of God like Peter to do something so bold and so ridiculous, something so weird in this moment. And God wants Cornelius to have a relationship, hook up with Peter. One is a devoted. He is, he, is, he is committed to God, while the other is devoted and committed to, to God. But here it is where I want to take you 
Cornelius, and what I want to do with you, Peter, I'm going to do something with you both you've never seen before. Because one of you are used to a way in God that you think this is the only way God can do it. While the other person that has been used by God, God is even blowing his mind because watch this. When it came down to Peter and who he was connected to and the Roman uh, being uh, connected to what Wash is looking at Romans, the Jews would look down on the Romans. It was, it watched this church, you wasn't supposed to have a real deal relationship with somebody like Cornelius. But God wants to do something new and amazing in the life of this man that's following God. Cornelius was the type of person that watched this. He had a little bit of Jew in him, just a little bit, but when it came down to circumcision, there were some things he wouldn't tap into. I only go so far in my connection with God. I, I'm not going to do it because I, what I'm a part of, teaches me not to do. And then you got Peter. So Peter, he has a relationship with Jesus. You got Cornelius who got a relationship with God. Both of them got a relationship with God, but both have different views of God. How many of us got friends that got different views of God? What you believe as it relates to God, the other person don't believe what you believe. And I don't see where Cornelius or Peter in the text are arguing over their beliefs. They're not having no division. We ain't, we ain't, we're not going to be fussing over what we believe. All I know is God is talking to you and God is talking to me. As you go on in this particular story, church, we look at the mere fact that it got to be hard they don't say it for Cornelius to send his men because like some of us, can you imagine God revealing some things to you to tell you to do some things and you saying, God, go to who? Go where? First of all, who is this? It's amazing to me how God sends an angel to talk to Cornelius, but he don't send the angel to present the gospel to Cornelius. Because sometimes God has a way of setting up connections. where He can use his angels just to build a bridge and bring a connection to you. And watch this. Now it's up for, to you to present the gospel. He sends an angel to visit Cornelius. He sends him in his prayer time while seeing a vision. But then when you look at Peter, the Bible says, look in Acts chapter 10. Y'all got to read it for yourself. I don't have time. The Bible says Peter falls into a trance while he's hungry. Now y'all know good and well, some of us can't think right when we hungry. Because you hangry. You hungry and you have you ever been around somebody that's hungry and they starting to get irritated? And please, please pull up to this McDonald's, this Burger King. Get, hurry up and pull up to this Chick-fil-A. Get them something to eat because you're a hot mess. The Bible says that Cornelius falls into this trance. This trance is something similar to daydreaming. This trance is it's an out of mind experience. While he's hungry, he's sitting there and God decides to talk to Cornelius from watch this, what's on his mind. He uses what's on Cornelius' mind to get his point across. 
So he starts using food and he tells Cornelius that, listen, watch this. Um, um, what you call impure, watch this. What you think that's not right is going to be right now. And here's what I need you to do, uh, Cornelius. I need you to eat something that you're not used to eating. I need you to take in something that you're not used to taking in. And here is where we, where's a problem. Because sometimes when God is doing new things in us, we'll be like Peter and tell God, uh-uh, not me. Peter was bold. Peter never had a problem with telling uh, Jesus no. That's why one time Peter told Jesus no, and Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. Peter was supposed to get his feet washed, and he said, Jesus, don't you wash my feet. No, 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 no. Peter is used to telling, watch this, his leader, no, he's bold. He has in his mind what he think the relationship should be, so he think he can come and tell, watch this, even God, no. But here it is, God has to reveal to him, I know I'm in the text, y'all. He has to reveal to Cornelius at least three times to take this thing in. Because I, and the reason why God will reveal Mr. Davis three times is because surely God wants you to get something. Watch this, that you don't think you should have. But I need you to get this because change is in this seat. Oh, my God. This is why when you look at Jesus, he's not a transactual, transactual leader. He's not a person that he comes in and try to build a relationship or anything with um, us or charisma. He is a transformational leader. What is a transformational leader to us? A transformational leader come in and totally disrupt your culture. Totally disrupt whatever is there and he brings on the mind of God. Pastor Miles, what's the vision of this house? Oh my God, cultivating believers for transformational impact. Why do you believe that with such passion, Pastor Miles? Because there is, watch this, systems and cultures God is trying to invade and he wants to, watch this, raise you up as a believer. He wants you to get saved so that you can be raised up as a believer to bring transformation. I hope y'all just got the vision if you wanted it. Here it is. God it wants to use us to bring change and disrupt systems and culture and he does it in a way watch this where he does through love I don't care whether or not Cornelius you are a Gentile I don't care whether you are Roman I don't care Peter whether you've been walking with me and walking with me I'm getting ready to do what God wants to be done in the earth amongst both of you and that is bring transformation watch this Cornelius to your life Life, but Peter, I'm going to bring transformation to what you thought what was. That means your mind. I only got three claps. It's fine. Oh, oh, Cornelius. God, well, Peter, I know you don't want to eat this, but you're going to have to eat this. You know how people tell you? This is a hard pill to swallow. Sometimes you're going to have to swallow them pills. <laughs> the doctor didn't told you. <laughs> you need to take them pills. Well, Pastor Miles, I'm on 10 and 20 and 15. Sometimes you get to a point. Well, Mother Enoch, I got I to gotta take these pills. Nephew, there's places that God's going to take you, sir, that is going to blow your mind. It's going to be weird, but it's going to be wonderful. Sometimes God make us go through the most strangest seasons. I've been in a many of times. He takes you through the most strangest seasons. And you say, God, well, I thought you was going to do it like this. I thought this person was going to be for me. I thought this person was going to be on my side. I thought this was going to work like this. I thought I would not ever have to deal with this. But watch this. Sometimes God will send certain things in your life. And watch this. It's because God has a plan 
and watch this. I need you to understand that here it is. I like Cornelius because Cornelius may have been, watch this, a person who was, who was, uh, he had an idea of God. He was raised in such a way that he had, uh, he, 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 he thought he was doing right by God. But I like how God intervenes because what you thought was right really ain't right. But I'm so much God that I didn't let you die. And then I saw your prayers and I saw you giving. Here's what caught my attention. I saw that you talked to me, but you really didn't have an understanding of me. And my question was, as I was studying this, oh my God, uh, Cornelius, how long have you been praying to God? And God just been sitting there like, I'm waiting for the right time to change your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting on the right time to change your view. Because some of you in here, the reason why we can't do kingdom is because God can't change your view. You still trying to bring on your culture. You still trying to bring on your tradition. Watch this. Some of you, it's not about the culture or the family you was in. Some of you got a church culture that, watch this, that's on you that you haven't died to. And God is saying, when I'm bringing you into change, I don't care what you're trying to hold on to. I'm trying to take you to a place that's going to change your life. And I know we don't like that. I know we don't want to hear that. But if God is doing it, when are you going to say yes? Because God is not moved off your emotion. God is not moved off of what you want. God is moved about the expected end that he told you in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plan. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I have towards you to prosper, to bring you to an expected end. I know I'm preaching right. God, Sister Christian, has a plan. And he knows how to bring the plan together. That's why I want to tell somebody in here, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the enemy is trying to tell you. God has a plan. I need somebody to, to oh, oh my God, look at somebody and say, God has a plan. When we go into this quarterly business meeting after church and they tell you what we need to get fixed, I need you to say, God has has a plan. If you're going to keep telling me problems and ain't telling me the solution, then you ain't dreaming with me. I need some people around me that can dream bigger than the problem. God has a plan. God has a plan. It is, Cornelius. The plan don't make sense. Here it is, Peter. God is disrupting what you know. Don't you have a better connection with Jesus than Cornelius do? God is still getting ready to disrupt your plan. Don't dummy down God to your mindset. Why God is revealing to you, watch this, while you're praying and having a vision, God is dealing with the person that's about to change your life in a trance. Oh, God. God. <laughs> that's why the plan going to work together. Because watch this, er everything works together for the good of those that are called according to his purpose. This is the purpose for you, Cornelius. This is the purpose for you, uh, Peter. This, this is the purpose is that watch this as a man of God. I want to change your life. When I, when I get down into the verses, uh, I see that the men, there's a moment where Cornelius has to explain to Peter what happened with him. By the time he has to get with Peter, Peter is like I got to roll with what God is saying. Though, Cornelius, I don't think you deserve or I don't want you to have 
what I'm about to release out my mouth, I can't help but do it because I don't own myself. I've been with Jesus long enough that if he's talking to me, I only release what God tell me to release. And even when I say no, even my boldness don't override God's words. I don't care how bold you are. God will have a way of humbling you to still get across what he's trying to release in the lives of not only others, but even in your house. Church, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at an Acts that Peter start presenting the gospel. Listen to me, church. Peter start releasing the gospel. Who is he releasing the gospel to, Tara? Somebody, watch this, who really don't supposed to be chosen. Who really don't supposed to be getting this. And I'm talking to the people in here who are like Gentiles. All of us at one point was like Gentiles. And here it is that God's grace and mercy finds you and say, even though you don't deserve this good news, this good news of peace, this good news of reconciliation, this good news that Jesus died, the good news that he stayed there, the good news that he got up with all power in his hand, the good news. This is the good news to you, Cornelius, that watch this. The gospel is here to change your life, even though you don't deserve. Smile, calm down. You don't supposed to be yelling. I get excited, y'all. I get excited because I was once too the person that don't deserve it, Reverend Christian. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have all the things in place, but God finds some way, somehow, to keep showing up in my house, to keep showing up in the hospital, to keep showing up in the child, to keep showing up in my marriage, to keep showing up in my children, and he wants the gospel to be released. Oh my God! But it started with a man who had, watch this, Mr. Charles, a prayer life. He was devoted to God. He might didn't hear God like you heard him, but he had a relationship with God. What he thought he knew, what he thought he had right, he didn't have it right, but God wanted to finish this thing. I saw what you've done. I saw the mere fact that you gave out of the mere fact you thought it was pleasing me. I saw that you prayed out of the mere fact you thought it was pleasing me. Now let me give you something that really pleases me. When you hear Cornelius releasing the gospel, Miss Hawkins, he's releasing the gospel in the house of Cornelius. Quan, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Here it is, ladies, because sometimes your man won't tell you that the relationship with God they got may just be a little bit. I thought I got it. And sometimes, ladies and fellas, got to be patient. And that's why we got to stay in prayer. Because the question is, God, what else do you want to reveal to my man? What else do you want to reveal to, watch this, my family? What else do you want to reveal to the men that I sent to Joppa? Because sometimes it's not about your family. It could be about the people who serve you. See, the gospel is bigger than you. The gospel is bigger than your servants. The gospel is also for your family. As for me in my house, those who are, are up under my care. God wants, watch this, his desire is that all may be saved. Now here it is. Everybody's not going to be. But that don't stop the believer, you as Peter, from God using you to present the gospel. 
Because Cornelius is a representation of the world. But Peter is a representation of us who believe. He's steadily trying to beat down what you thought that was me. So when you pray, she, she, it's really like, God, disrupt my mind. If I need anything to be moved out the way, get it out the way so I can be a better leader, a better follower. Because how many people am I coming in contact with in my life who are Corneliuses and I'm never releasing the gospel? All because you got a mind of what you thought what was. You saying that person in the street don't need to hear you. You saying that person on the job, they want to talk more about vacation than you sharing the gospel. Here is also what I liked. While Peter was sharing the gospel, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came on him. Here it is. You too busy trying to figure out what next should I say. And God is saying, I just need you to take the first step and the Holy Ghost is going to fall. That's why I say, if he be lifted up, the Bible says, I'll draw. How does he draw? Because he draws through something invisible. It's called the Holy Ghost. You can't see the rope, but the Holy Ghost is the, is the rope that's pulling you. Yeah. Everybody stand to your feet. Yeah. Uh -huh. notice Cornelius and Peter God deals with one while praying and seeing a vision vision is prophetic but vision also watch this it starts in the mind Peter falls into a trance which when you deal with daydreaming or you deal with, watch this, you ever talk to somebody and while you're riding with them, you're talking, you're talking, you're talking. And it seems as if the person right there is listening. But then it's kind of like they snap out of it and say, oh, what you saying? Because it's, that's kind of like what it is to have a trance. It's that you have an out of mind, out of body experience. You, your mind, you're in the car, but your mind is everywhere. Yesterday, my, my wife, we, we, was, we, 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 we were tired and we took a nap. And she came in and she said, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, Reverend Christian. And then she said, I had a dream we were eating chicken. And guess where we went? I tell all her business. Guess where we went right after we, uh, we got ourselves together, Miss Maxwell? We got up and went to this food truck that had chicken wings. Her mind is going. What am I trying to say? Make the point clear. God wants to deal with some of you through your mind. Because the warfare is in your head. Sometimes God reveals, watch this, not to the men that's going to be sent to go get Peter. He starts the vision in the mind of the leader. The frustration of church now is that, watch this, we as humans can't see what the leader sees. So it frustrates the heck out of you because as much as you want to put your hand on it, you can't because sometimes God will download vision through your man. Ladies, you trying to figure out what is this, but could it be God is talking? It starts with the man. It starts with the leader. If you're going to change your household, it starts 
with you allowing God to open up your mind. Ask God in your prayer time, open up my mind. Give me new ideas. Give me a new way to talk to my son. Give me a new way to deal with my daughter because we have a relationship that is broken. Give me a way to deal with my family because it is hurting me. It is, it is a strain on me. This is tearing me into pieces. And God is saying, I am answering your prayers. I am going to deal with you. But here it is, Peter. You got to be open to eat what you ain't used to, what's not coming. Common. You got to be open to watch this, to embrace the uncommon because I'm getting ready to do a new thing. And the transformation that's coming to your family really started in your mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. God wants to change your mind so that when you go back and you handle any family situation, those who have hurt you and abused you, you are going back with a changed mind. Be not conformed to this here world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you see what God is trying to give you? Lord, we thank you today. And so God, have your way in our lives. We pray God, that in here, anybody that's going through something that need mind change, God, whatever it is, God, work through our minds, work through our dysfunction, work through what ain't working, work through what's not right, Ro work through the areas that's broken. God, bring reconciliation. God, bring peace. God, bring clarity. God, expose me to things in you that I did not know. God, so that I can please you. God, and when it, God, when you work on me, please, God, will you impact my house? God, we know that you have a plan. We know that, God, it works together. God, that your plan is going to work together but also God we want your plan to impact our house and I declare today that God your plan shall impact every person upon the, the sound of my voice God you will impact their house you will impact their house you will impact their house go to where there's discord go to where there's division go to where there's no teamwork go to where there's no unity go to there where there's no uh, uh, gospel God and bring what you want in their houses as for me and my house we will so God those who are not saved if everybody look like everybody, I know everybody in here. We are all saved. Here is my prayer for you. Take this sermon, and whether it was whack or not, I need you to take the sermon, listen to it again and again. And I want you to really get this in your belly. And I want you to find every person that you're coming in contact with. Start praying and asking God, when should I release this? When, when, when should I release this gospel? When is the right time I should tell you that God wants to bring peace in your life? I know you make great money, but you ain't got no peace. I know you got great jobs, but there's still something missing. I know you something there's something missing because you're depressed. You got a spirit of fear on your life. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love. Y'all help me preach this. And a sound what? Mind. God wants to change your mind. God wants to change your heart. So God, we're all saved. Those who are watching us, if you're not, let God change your heart. Let God change your mind. I pray that you are watching this right on your couch while you're in your kitchen while you're listening, riding in your car. Because watch this, this is not just for the unbeliever, this is for the believer as well. God wants to change our minds. Let him do it. Because this is not only going to affect you, it's going to affect those possibly that's in your house. Everybody going to get some of what God wants. Everybody will have an opportunity. If you're carrying the Holy Spirit, 
you got more than enough to be used in this season for change. God, we bless your name. We give you praise. If there's anybody in here today, you don't have a church home, come on and come up right now. Come connect with our church. Come and help us. I'm going to say this too. If you got any friends that have been coming to our church that have been watching us, I want you to ask them this question. When are you going to get connected? Don't waste another time visiting Pine Hill. I want you to get connected somewhere. But I love you enough to tell you, come be with me at Pine Hill. We got a work to do. We got lives to touch. We got ministry to do. We got a church building to work on. We got a, God has, God has planted us here. And if you connect with us, I believe that it can get done. So I need everybody to start taking their, their spiritual walk seriously. God used him like never before. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give our seed. Let's come on. Let's get ready to give our offering. Amen. If God has blessed you today, let's give him a hand clap of praise as well. Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to give. We're getting ready to give. If it's your time to tithe, amen, tithe. If it's your time to give your offering, let's do that. Thank you so much for being obedient. Amen. Being obedient as we can see today that God watches our giving as well as hears our prayers. He's, he's watching our giving as well as hearing our prayers. If God is continually to, uh, continuing on to keep your body, to keep your mind, and to keep your house, to help you still pay them bills, we should put something aside just to help, watch this, what we got here at church. Amen. 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 So my prayer is that we're being obedient. Amen to God because your your um your sowing your giving it helps to keep the lights on here it helps to get things fixed it helps us to keep us afloat until God bring us into a greater season and I believe that is coming ushers you can come on you can come on Amen 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 good to see our ushers today good to see those men y'all see our men y'all give it up for our men amen 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 good to see them amen and uh, men you can go ahead and serve you can go ahead and serve in this time amen 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 remember um next sunday we have wings of faith anniversary wings of faith our seniors anniversary amen amen i'm hoping that uh sister betty will be here um right now she's not feeling well so definitely want like i said uh keep her in prayer um we want to honor some of our seniors next sunday I'm um, looking to have a guest speaker on next Sunday as well. So I won't be preaching. Amen. This is for our seniors. It's for our seniors here at our church. I thank God for our seniors. Amen. Amen. I thank God for their wisdom. I thank God for their, for their insight. I thank God for them pulling me aside and saying, hey, pastor, we need this. We need to do this. We want to hear this. We want to have this and everything like that. Thank you so, so much. Stretch your hand towards the offering. Lord, we thank you for the seed that have been sown. We pray that it be used for the edifying of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may stand to your feet. Let's get on up out of here. Amen. Amen. Um, I think we're going to break away. How many minutes we need? Ms. Maxwell, five? At least to 11.30. So that'll be 10, ten minutes, y'all. Probably about nine. Nine minutes. Go out there, get you a little snack, some juice, little muffins or whatnot. They're going to get set up in here, and we're going to have this meeting real quick so that you can get to brunch or go eat wherever you want to eat. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for, Father God, uh, your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your challenge, God, today, Father God, so that we can go and touch more people. I pray, God, that the angels be encamped around our vehicles and our homes, that we may get home safely and have a good night's rest. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. We love you. If you got to leave, we understand. But if you don't, please stay to hear what we have at the quarterly business meeting. Amen.